You! You! You just slaughtered those guards, and for what? To speak with me? What could possibly be so urgent? So, this is one of the guys who runs the colony, huh? Small room for a big shot. If this is about another aether wave clip or radio spot, you may kindly fuck off, as the parlance goes. I'm not doing any more. What are you talking about? Slowly and loudly, Aloysius, that's the only way these morons understand anything. I said, you may tell Charles to go fuck himself. Who is Charles? And why are we yelling? Chairman Rock! Oh. Oh. Terribly sorry. I thought you were part of Rockwell's PR team. But if you're not... That means you're a dissident? A real, live dissident? But what are you doing here? And how did you get in? I'm here for the dimethyl sulfoxide. Drugs, of course. What else? Why did I get my hopes up? Back to idiot speak. I don't have any drugs. You should try a vending machine or a purveyor of curative goods. I don't know if our chemicals are here, but this guy is definitely not. Will that be all then? They're not drugs, they're chemicals. And if you haven't been ordering them, who has? Process of elimination. The only other person with access? Of course, of course. It's Rockwell again. Who else? And I thought he was only holding me here to keep me out of the way. You mean Chairman Rockwell's locked you up in here? You are a quick study, indeed. I've long suspected Rockwell of transacting business in my name, but this proves it. Yeah, sure. It's always. Someone else who ordered the hookers an energizing ointment. Please, this is important. Whatever it is that brought you here, Rockwell's the one behind it. Why would he go through all this trouble? How should I know? I've been under house arrest for years. But there is a way to find out, and perhaps to set things right. Whatever Rockwell's doing, he'll be doing it from the HHC headquarters. Your best lead is to look for details in his office. This colony's problems have always seemed to trickle down from the top. If we're set on fixing Halcyon, that's as good a place as any to start. Exactly. And fix it we must. We really gonna do this? Getting involved is a messy business, and it rarely pays. This is about more than bits. This is about the survival of the colony. If you don't help, who will? Why, this is starting to sound like an issue of Dissident Hunter. The HHC headquarters? Halcyon Holdings Corporation, the collective of companies that run the colony together. Allegedly in partnership with the Earth Directorate and appointed Minister of Earth. I wouldn't trust you to run an empty warehouse. I assure you, I didn't ask to be locked up and made to perform like a trained animal. But I'm attempting to make the best of an opportunity. I only hope you can do the same. Now we've got to get into the HHC. That's in the Acropolis District, along with the other major corporate and government facilities. But only board employees are allowed into the district. There's a heavily guarded checkpoint just down the street. There might be a route through the maintenance tunnels, but I'm afraid I don't know specifics. Most people avoid the area for obvious reasons. All right, but once I get there, then what? When you reach the HHC building, this access card should get you up to the executive suites, where the chairman's office and what used to be my office are. What used to be your office? Oh, I haven't been allowed up there in years. I shudder to think what Rockwell's done with the place. A gilded minibar, perhaps? A personal theater? A man has too much money and too little sense. Alright, well I guess I'll be my way then. Wait! Rockwell has one of the only terminals capable of transmitting to the earthbound message drone. 
This is our chance. Please, take this and transmit it from his office. Rockwell hasn't given me any messages from Earth for years. He's desperate to keep me out of contact with the Earth Directorate. But they need to know what's happening here. What's on the cartridge? What isn't on it is the real question. I've gathered meeting minutes, internal messages, sustainability reports, and more, all exposing the corruption and mismanagement plaguing Halcyon. Once the rest of the Earth Directorate sees it, they'll have to send help. You're awful trusting for a guy who's been locked in his own house for years. The Earth Directorate is our best hope. Even Rockwell's resources are no match. And it is hardly in their interest to let Halcyon crash. That seems dumb. And this is coming from an idiot. In the name of the Architect, what hope is there if this is our best chance? It's all I can do. Please, won't you at least try? No. Then I suppose I can only hope. Good luck. This colony requires a change in leadership. More board. No more corporate control. No more UDL. No more spacer's choice. but you are no more Survivors! It's for the greater good! for the greater good. So then I told him, you have a message from adjutant Sophia Akande. Who? No one ever looks quite the same in person as they do in my reports. And my reports of you have been exceptionally thorough. You've had quite a career. Who the heck are you? You have something I want. I'd like to negotiate. Your people have terrible security. Anybody could have looked at those chemicals. Yes, I'm aware that you stole a batch of precious chemicals and destroyed an important experiment. Enterprising of you, if irritating. 
My scientists tell me they'll restore the damage you've done within a matter of months. But I'm not here to talk about minor setbacks. Phineas Wells is wanted by the board. I want to convince you to turn him in to us. The board can suck it. The answer is no. Get her off my ship, Ada. I'm not on your ship. This is a transmission. Adjutant Akande's call has been terminated. Will there be anything else, Captain? No more calls from her. Well, Phineas, I'm back. Got the stuff. I've kept myself busy in your absence. Optimized my formula. I'm now confident I can revive the remaining colonists. Great. All I need now is the dimethyl sulfoxide. I'll take as much as you can give me. I found the chemicals in the ministry. The board was testing them on human subjects. Human test subjects? Oh, that's grotesque. That's unthinkable. That's exactly what I'd expect out of the board. I had to let the test subjects die. But I got the chemicals. Thank you. You've brought me enough chemicals to get started, at least. I'm just sorry they came at the cost of human lives. Those poor people, they must have died in agony. What exactly was the board trying to accomplish? Something about repeatedly melting frozen people? I, I, there are lots of big words. What nonsense! People aren't just slabs of meat the board can freeze and thaw at their convenience. I'll tell you this much. The board scientists are hopelessly lost. After years of fruitless experimentation, they've made exactly zero progress. The colony's on the verge of collapse. The board's been trying to cover it up. I know! I've suspected as much for years. Of course, I don't expect the board to do a thing about it. They've been driving our colony to the brink of destruction for decades. The board's mismanagement put our colony on the road to collapse. If we don't put a stop to them, thousands of colonists are going to die. It gets worse. The chairman's planning on freezing every worker in Halcyon. Oh, hold on. Uh, let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. There has to be something we can do. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. We could do that. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists, the brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the Hope. You know, it would have been a lot easier if you just set up your lab next to the Hope. Merciful gibbering law! You're a genius! I know. We bring the Hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space, right next to my lab. That's crazy! I like it. Just wait until you hear the details. I haven't been this energized since the time I injected myself with raw cavanoid. If we link up the hope to the unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. I've got a healthy disregard for personal safety, but this sounds crazy, even to me. Your instincts are correct. By any reasonable definition of sanity, this plan is crazy. Isn't it wonderful? You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope's skip drive. Once
Once you've skipped the hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Okay, I'll do it. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. So we're really gonna do this? Yeah. I've seen lots of crazy, Captain, but Phineas is in a class of his own. Do you really think he knows what he's doing? Sending us to skip the hope into Teratu's orbit right under the board's nose? I don't know, but it's our best chance. There's a sobering thought. Makes me want to drink. Here, here. I think this whole plan's insane, but it'll make a good story, you know, if we survive. We have arrived at the Hope. I need you to reroute power from our ship to the Hope's auxiliary generator. You'll have to connect me to the Hope's comm system so I can convince her central computer to enable the skip drive. Can you hear me, Captain? I have successfully integrated myself into the Hope's comm systems and am attempting to establish contact with the Hope's more primitive processor now. Would you like me to play a mood-suitable music selection while you travel to the bridge? Oh, sorry. File not found. That's the Hope's computer up ahead. I'll admit, I am curious to wake him. Once we switch that thing on, we can get out of here, right? Maybe. Greetings, Captain. I am speaking to you through the Hope's computer system. It's a rather cramped feeling, but it'll do. Okay, I'm ready to skip the hope. Are you sure? That is extremely dangerous. Skipping the hope will void the warranty on the skip drive. And also potentially kill an entire planet. How is my humor now, Captain? Improved? Skip the hope to Terra 2. Jump starting the skip drive. Destination set to the rings of Terra 2. Let me do it. I wouldn't advise that, Captain. In case I don't get another chance to say it, it's been interesting, Captain. Stand back, Ada. I know the number's real good. Well, I literally can't dispute that. Please, with the daily ship log note that I defer to the Captain against my better judgment. I am programmed not to ignore an order, after all. ADA. Does your captain seriously intend to do a micro-jump in system with engines that haven't been powered in 70 years on a derelict ship? That is what my captain intends, yes. But that is a gross misuse of the skip drive. The Zero Point Drives Corp and I will not be held responsible for any damage incurred during transport, and this will cause extreme damage. Yes, I am aware of that. You should not be doing this. The humans will die. These calculations don't look right. Why is this number negative? Thank you, Hope. It looks like all systems are go. Captain, I would advise you to hold on to something. Now. Ah, what are they worried about? I I'm good at numbers. I did the maths right? I'm sure of it.
Uh oh. I have to say, that was kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> the end. Hey, it's a Manchu from the editing chair. So, I got through the game, I got that secret ending of flying the hope into the sun, and I figured I was done with it there. But then, you know, a day or so later, I came back to it and thought, well, let's just play through the final part of, of the game, the final mission as if I hadn't flown the hope into the sun and yeah, I just play it through just for myself and I got to the end and I realized there are references to Gorgon there's another stupid choice that I made at the end that that changed some things and the final um, summary that the narrator gives of what happens to the various settlements and the various uh, people that you encounter had some mention of Gorgon in it and I thought oh crap I really should include that in there and I wasn't recording shoot so I, I went back and I, I you know turned on the recorder and I got through that ending part again just to show it off so here's that you don't know how glad I am to see you you did the right thing Akande was a monster her death was much deserved, and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. What did they do to you? I'm all right, thanks to you. Akande wanted my cooperation. I'm quite sure she would have beaten it out of me if you hadn't arrived. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Oh, I was just about to pop open some drinks and celebrate. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hope's brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? Huh? Oh, sorry, I wasn't listening. I was thinking about getting some ice cream. I see. Well, uh, you've certainly earned a treat for yourself. I'll just, uh, get on with reviving the other colonists and saving Halcyon, then. Enjoy your, uh, creamed ice, or whatever you call it. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. 
the damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Left unchecked, the war on Monarch consumed both MSI and the Iconoclasts. And when the sulfur cloud settled, only stragglers from both factions remained. Some found their way to Sublight, some to Terra too and some lived their final years fighting for food in the wilderness. In the end, only the beasts remained. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took sublight salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Lay Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lay the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Even the Gorgon asteroid though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. The destroyed Adrena Time Synthesizer became a symbol of the board's cruelty and a rallying point for Wells and his scientists as they sought to build a more humane, ethical Halcyon. They cleared the dead from Gorgon's laboratories and repurposed them to aid in the crucial work of solving the colony's nutrition crisis. The Gorgon Project's final explosive end was bittersweet for Olivia Ambrose. She wandered the colony's fringes alone, searching for others like her who despised the board and meant to destroy them. In time, she found Phineas Wells and his cadre of scientists, and she joined them in their efforts to save Halcyon. For a while, she even knew an uneasy peace. But for all that, Olivia found purpose in Wells' project. She was always haunted by the memory of her daughter, Minnie, who hadn't lived to see the better world they were building. She never did forgive herself for the horror her work had wrought on Halcyon. But she remembered fondly the daring captain who'd put an end to it at last. In spite of everything, the Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster 
in humanity's most ambitious efforts. Your influence further cemented Ellie's perspective. She understood she could never truly rely on others, so she set about making sure she wouldn't have to. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She enjoyed a long and infamous career running missions across the system. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Milstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. After all he'd seen and heard adventuring with you, the vicar Maximilian de Soto renounced his faith and joined the effort to rebuild the colony. Ironically, he finally found the joy that had eluded him over the course of his life and realized that perhaps he was always meant to be just a simple laborer after all. He quickly dismissed the idea. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, Despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and left Dr. Wells to save Halcyon on his own. You had more pressing matters to attend to. Ice cream. As you tasted your first scoop of Rizzo's partially emulsified, semi-frozen milk-like dessert, you realized something. All your troubles all your adventures, all your struggles and choices. They had all led to this single moment. 
and it was all worth it. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. And that truly is the end of the Peril on Gorgon DLC. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope it wasn't too incoherent, but like I say, there's a link at the end of this video to my full playthrough of The Outer Worlds, and that probably would put things in better perspective if you haven't seen it. And hey, you know, if you like this video, click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Later on this week, I'm going to be starting a new playthrough of something entirely different. So be sure to watch for that next time. Until then, this is Amanchu, and this was The Outer Worlds, Peril on Gorgon. <laughs>